Okay, uh, the, so the continuation of the topic, yesterday we did about the phase, okay? So how we define the phase of the wave? Phase of the wave is actually when we represent the wave in terms of the angles, we call that as a phase of the wave. And why it is important, uh, using the phase of the wave, you can identify the vibration of the particles. For example, if the two particles have a phase difference, either 0 or 360 or 2 pi radian, we call them as in phase. And if the particles have a phase difference, angle difference of 180 or a pi radian, what we call, we call them as an anti phase. So example, say this is a wave and it is same, the phase of the wave is like categorizing the wave in terms of the angle. So example here, we have this starting position. So this angle is zero, like starting of the circle. Then the quarter, like example, if this point is A, this point is A. So what is the quarter of the circle? The qu quarter of the circle angle is 90. So what we call quarter of the wave, we also call angle is 90. Or in terms of the pi, we can say it is pi by 2. Same thing, when we have a half of the circle, the change in the angle is 180. So same way, when we have half of the wave, the change in the angle, what we call, we call that as a pi radian or 180 degrees. If we have 3 by three by 4 of the circle, so the total change in the angle is 270. So here, the 3 by 4 of the wave, the change in the angle will be 370 or we can also say 3 pi by 2. And when we have returned to the same position, the total angle of the circle is 180 degrees, uh, sorry, 360 degrees or 360 is also known as 2 pi radian. So when we categorize the position of the waves in terms of the angle, what we call, we call that as a phase of the wave. This we did yesterday. Now, what is the term phase difference? Phase difference means when we take a difference in terms of the angle. Like if I say point A, point B, what is the phase difference between A and B? So A is at 0 and B is 90 or pi by 2. So what is the phase difference between A and B? So it is 90 because this is 0 and this 90. So phase difference between A and B, we just take a difference. So it will be equals to pi by 2 or it is equals to 90. So between A and B, the phase difference is 90. What is the phase difference between A and C? Point A and point C. What is the phase difference? So A is at 0 and C is at 180. So what is the phase difference? It will be 180 or pi. What is the phase difference between B and C? What is the phase difference between B and C? So because B is at 90 and C is 180, so the phase difference between them, 90, which is also equals to pi by 2. We just take a difference of the angle. Same way, if what is the phase difference between A and D? So what is the phase difference? So A is at 0 and D is at 360. So when we subtract 360 minus 0, so we got 360. Or we can also say 2 pi radian. And this is pi radian. So there is a specific term used. There is a specific term used whenever the two points are 180 out of phase. Like 180 is a phase difference. What we call, we call them as antiphase. And when the phase difference between the two points is equal to 360 or 0, what we call, we call them as in phase. So we may have the points in phase. For 90, 270, we don't use a specific term, but for 180, for 180 or 360, we use a specific term. So if it is 180, it will be anti-phase. If it is 360, it will be in-phase. So between C and D also, like example, between C and D, C is at 180, D is at 360. So what is the phase difference between C and D? That is also 180 or we can also say pi radian. And what is this phase difference between like example point F is there. So between C and F, this is 180 and this 270. So the phase difference will be 90. So 
for a wave you can work out the phase differences i'll give another example as well like it's not necessary that the wave start from the the vibration when you start to observe start from the mean position it might be at any interval So this is a wave and we want to label the first angle. So this is a start zero. This will be 90 quarter. This will be half 180. This will be 270. This will be 360 because when 360, when we write 360, it means it's a one complete vibration from one crest to another. It's a one complete vibration. Now, so you can simply after every quarter add 90. Okay, after every quarter and when it becomes 360 and then if you want to add even 360 plus 90, so you get 450. So you can write 450 or you can also write zero. It's fine. Now, if I say what is the phase difference between point A and point B? What is the phase difference between A and B? So between A and B, the phase difference is 180 or I, I can, so it's pi radian. So when it is 180 or pi radian, what does it mean? We, we call them, they are anti-phase. When we say it is anti-phase, in phase when it is 360, anti-phase means when it is 180. When we say it's anti-phase, what does it mean? It means these group of the particles are not moving in the same manner. Like, the particles for A, if they are moving down, the particle at B will move up. So because their vibrations are exactly opposite of each other, that's why we say they are anti-phase. Anti here refers to opposite. But if we have another point C is here, so what is the phase difference between A and C? What is the phase difference between A and C? So it is 360 degrees or you can also say 2 pi radian. So when it is 260 or 2 pi radian, what we call, we call them as in phase. The term in phase refers to, because when you draw the direction of arrow of the motion of the particle, as you can see that the particles at C and the particles at A are moving in the same manner. So we use the term in phase. But particle at A and the particle at B are moving opposite. That's why we call anti-phase. So in phase means they move in the same way. And how you know they move in the same way? When the vibration is like the angle difference is 100, is 360 or it might be zero. But if it is like 90 or 270, then we don't use the term in phase or anti-phase. In phase and anti phase only is the term used when the particles are either vibrating in the same manner or opposite. Like if I say a particle at D and E, what is the phase difference between D and E? What is the phase difference between point D and point E? So point D is at 90 and E is at 180. So when you take a difference, 180 minus 90, so you get 90. Or you can also say it is pi by 2. But you don't say, no, when it is 90, then you don't say it is anti-phase. Anti-phase is only used when it is 180 and in-phase is used when it is 0 or 360. Claire? Um, Can I ask something? Yes. Oh, wait, can I just point on the annotate one sec? I'll show okay. the points. Okay, so this point and also this point have the difference of uh, 180. Does that mean they're, they're also an in anti -phase. opposite? Yes, that's right. Direction? This also yeah. an anti -phase. Yes. So when this they're... will be either up, this will be this will be either up and this will be either down. Yes. Like this? Yes, I will even draw. Uh, the next point is like how the how do you show the vibration or the motion of the particles, which direction they will move. That is the next point. I, I was about to draw that, show that. Okay. So, 
So how you this is this is, whenever the angle difference is one hundred and eighty, you will always say antiphase. How you will know which direction the particle will move? So simple rule is that, for example, if the wave is given to you and they ask. Draw an arrow to show the direction in which the particle will move. Like what will be the next? Like either it will move downward or upward. So this is say this is a wave given to you. And the question is draw an arrow like for point A which direction it will move point B which direction it will move point C which direction it will move point D which direction it will move So what you will do how to identify the direction of the motion or the movement of the particle So what we do like this is a starting point we just start the wave from another point ahead to know the direction and we draw the same wave in a same cycle like the same time period So if I want to complete, for example, they meant, they ask which direction the point A will move. So which direction the point A is moving? As you can see, this is point A, but now because the points will not move right or left, they will move either up or down in a transverse wave. So what will be the next position of the point A? Means the next position of the point A will be here. So which direction the point A is moving? The point A is moving downward. Same way, this was point B. What is the next position of point B? Because this is a wave. So what will be the arrow? Like how we represent an arrow with direction point B will move. So the arrow will be upward. Same way. If you want to show the position of the point C. So what will the position? Because this blue one is representing the new position. So point C will be here. So what is the direction of movement of point C? Though the point C will be upward as well. If I want to show the direction of the motion of point D. Blue wave is, it is the same wave, but what we show, we show like the new position of the wave. As the wave is moving, the red one was given to us and we want to show the direction of the motion of the particles. So how we represent, so we'll draw a similar wave, but ahead of the one which is given to us to identify the motion of the particles. Like which direction the particles will move. So here C will move upward. What about D? Like this red is representing the original wave. Blue is representing the new position. So what is the direction of the motion of D? So it means D will, the new position of D will be here. So what is the direction of the motion of the D? The direction of the motion of D will be downward. Same way, if there was point E here and they ask, draw an arrow to show the direction of position of point E, the red one was the original position, the blue one is a new position. So it means the point B, E will be here. So which direction the point E has moved, so it has moved downward. So that's how we identify the position of the particles, the direction of the movement of the particles. Is it uh, clear? Any doubt in this? Yes, yeah, same wavelength and same amplitude, but different origin ahead of the first one. So when we draw, and this is done for a progressive wave, for a progressive wave, that's how we identify the direction of the movement of the particles. Like either it will move up or it will move down. Anyone having a doubt or a question in this? Any question or a doubt in this? This is a way to identify the phase difference between the... So this is the way how we identify the phase difference between the particles. Okay. 
there's also another way to work out the phase difference between the waves. If I want to work out, this is, if we have one wave, we can identify which points are in phase and which points are anti phase. But there's also another way to identify that the phase difference between the waves. If two different waves are there, If two different waves are there and we want to determine the phase difference between them, it can be a displacement distance graph, it can be a displacement time graph. For example, we have a displacement and time graph. The two waves have the same wavelength, they have the same uh, amplitude can vary, but wavelength is same or the time period is also same. For like example, this is one wave. And this is another wave. And the question is identify the phase difference. So how to identify the phase difference here between the two waves? So first what we know, we'll use a simple concept that the time period, when they complete one time period, when they complete one wave, the time period will be equal to 360 degrees. Like when there's a one complete wave and that time is known as a time period. So one complete time period is 360 degrees. So I will mention the scale as well. So I'll mention the scale as well. Say this is zero. This is five, 10, 15, 20, 25, say 25 and then 30. And we want to work out the phase difference between the two waves. So, and they have the same time period because you can work out the phase difference. So waves should have same time period because if two different time periods are there, they will not have a constant phase relation. It will continuously change. So if two waves have the same time period, like first, what is the time period of wave? Any one of them you can take, say, this is one wave. If I'm taking, it's taking 20. And same thing, the other one, if I take, that's also taking 20. So what is the time period? The time period is 20 seconds. So it means 20 seconds, when the wave complete 20 seconds, it means it is 360 degrees. Because one complete vibration or one wave is the phase of a one wave is equivalent to 360. Now, what is the difference of the two waves? So how to know what is the difference of the two waves? You should have a same starting point for the two waves. When you have the same starting point of the two waves, then you can work out the difference in in terms of the two waves, like say the time period, this is one complete wave. So it is completing a period here at this point. So this is point X. When the other wave, other wave is also completing because what we want to do, we want to make sure that they start from the same point. So this is one complete wave. So if I want to work out how much difference is there, I should start them from the same point. So which point, like example, see this point X and this point Y. If I consider point X and Y means these are the identical points of the two waves. As you can see for a black and for blue, the same manner it is starting. So what I will do, I will work out the difference in the time of these X and Y. So what is the difference of the time between X and Y? Or I can also take the two points X and Y. Like if this is this point, I'm taking X. So what is the identical point for the other wave? So this is the identical point for the other wave. So I can take this X and Y. Or if I take this point as X, like example, this point as X. So this will be the identical point for the other wave Y. So what we have to do, we have to take the two identical points of these waves. So you can, it can be starting or it can be anywhere in between. 
So what is the interval between the two identical points of the waves? So between x and y, that is 5 seconds. So it means 5 seconds will be equals to x. We just cross multiply. So x will be equals to 360 times 5 divided by 20. So when we simplify this, this will be 18 multiplied by 5. So 18 multiplied by 5, which is equals to 90. So it means what is the phase difference here between the two waves? The phase difference between the two waves is equals to 90. Is it uh, clear, this idea, how to work out the phase difference? Is it uh, clear? Let's take another example, how to work out the phase difference of the waves. And this can be given in terms of the wavelength or it can also be given in terms of, they might give you the wavelength or they may give you the time, the time axis. It does not make difference. So this is one wave. And this is another wave. Amplitude may, may be same or may not be, but uh, we don't bother about amplitude. It's a time period should be same for the two waves. And we have the label like example. Say this is, this one is zero. This one is 20. And now it's a distance and displacement graph. This one is 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120. The question is, find the phase difference between the two waves. So first, what you will do, it this, this time, because the wavelength is given, because the distance is given, using a distance, we know the one complete wave is equals to wavelength, or distance between the two successive crests is a wavelength, or distance between the two successive troughs is also the wavelength. So what is the wavelength of the wave? Because they, they have the same wavelength. What is the wavelength of the wave here? What is the wavelength? Wavelength is the length of one complete wave. Or distance between the two successive crests or the two successive troughs. So when we take the wavelength, like what is it? One complete wave. This is one complete crest and then one complete trough. So what is the wavelength here? The wavelength is equals to 80. Or you take from one crest to another crest, that will be the wavelength. So it is at 20 mark. This is at 100 mark, so 100 minus 20. So that's equal to 80. Or you just take a one complete wave from the starting till this point, so that will also give 80. So length of the one complete wave is 80. So wavelength is 80, and whenever the wave complete one wavelength, what is the phase? The phase is equals to 360 degrees. So 80 meters or 80 centimeter or 80 millimeters equals to 360 or two pi radian. Now we want to work out the phase difference. So when we work out the phase difference, we have to take the identical points. So, if I mark x here, say if I mark x here and I mark y here, is it correct? Are these points identical for the two waves? So, no, it's not right because I took the crest there. So, I should take the same identical points. Or if I took x here for blue, where I should take y for the, the identical point for the other wave? So this will be that because that this start crest, this also started crest. So mean these are the identical points of the two waves, X and Y. What is the difference between X and Y in terms of the wavelength, the length, 40. So the distance between them is equal to 40. So if it is 40, then this will be X. When we cross multiply, so when you, it will be 40 times 360 divided by 80. So when you simplify, you get 
as the half of the 180 degrees or pi radian. Is it uh, clear, this example? So they can give you the x-axis as a distance. They can give you the x-axis as a time. And even if it's a distance or a time, you work out the phase in the same manner. Another example about the phase. This is one wave. And this is another wave. And so this is zero. The t this was a time, this is a time axis, uh, 40, <clears throat> 80, uh, 120, 160, 200, and 240. Now, <clears throat> if you work out the time period, because here is a time period, so time period and a phase, because x axis is a time axis, so it will be time period. What is it? 360 is one time period. What is the time for one complete wave? What is the time interval for one complete wave? So time period for one complete wave, that's equals to 160. So 160 seconds equivalent to 360 degrees or 2 pi radian. Now we want to identify the identical points. Like example, say this is X. And this is also Y. The time period means time to complete one vibration. One vibration means one complete crest and one complete trough. That's one vibration. So this was 0, this was 40, this is 80, 120, and 160. So means the time period is 160. So 160 is 360 degrees. The time interval, like the time period of 160 equals to 360 degrees or 2 pi radian. Now, because they have the same starting point, same manner, the two waves are starting. So what is the time interval between the two waves? I can say zero. So zero is equals to X. We just cross multiply. So X is equals to zero multiplied by 360 divided by 160. So what we'll get X means that the phase difference. So we get a phase difference zero. So what is the phase difference between these two waves? They don't have any phase difference because the two waves are starting from the same point. Or you can also say 360 because if I take X as here and I took Y here, so then I will say it is 360. Is it uh, clear the concept of the phase difference? Anyone having a doubt or a question in this? Can, can I yes. uh, annotate again? One second. Yes, sure. Yes. Okay, can I take this and uh, this as identical points? Yes, you can take this, these two as identical point. Then what is the time interval between the two points? Um, 80, 80 seconds. No, which, like the for the two waves, you mean? No, no, no. Yeah. It, because it should be a same mode of vibration. I thought you're saying like, take the two identical point X and Y here, or X and Y here. What you're saying is take X here and take Y at this point. Yeah. That's, yeah. this is, why this is not possible? Because see, if I take X here for say blue one. So from this point, it is starting a trough. The X for the blue point wave, it's starting a trough. But if I, for a red one, if I take this as a point, it means it is starting a crest. So it means they're not the identical points. They're vibrating in a different manner. When I mean that identical point, it means 
that take the points which shows the same way of a vibration of the wave or the particles. So if I take, like this is one wave, I took X here for the first wave and now this is another wave with the same wavelength and I'm taking a Y here for that second wave. These are not called identical point Y because from point X, it is starting a trough, but from point Y, it is starting a crest. So it means these are not identical points. The identical point refers so, to, yes. Uh, uh, so like, uh, can't, you, even so, this is also starting a crest here, right? And here also they're like equal, th this also makes 80 seconds because they both are starting their throw. Yeah, so you can this start, also... you can start, like you can take X and Y at this point as well. But then same difference I'll get in the time, 80 seconds. If I do this as X and I do this as no, Y. No, no, no. No, no. That you cannot do. Like example, what you're saying, take this point as X and you're saying take this point as Y. That is not correct. Why it is not correct? Because for example, if I take this point as X, it is starting a crest. And when I take this point as Y, this is starting a top. So means they are not the identical point. What we have to do, we have to take two points on the two different waves, which have the same mode of vibration or same manner of vibration. So for the first okay. wave, if I'm taking this point, it is like moving up. When I take this point, it's moving down. So means the two waves, the two points which we took on the waves, they are not starting, they're not vibrating in the same manner. That's why we cannot take these two points. Whenever we want the phase difference, we make like identify the points which have same mode of vibration and we take a difference between those two points. Is it clear? Okay. So the answer is 360, right? Yeah, you can take 360. Like for example, it answer, it can be zero or it can be 360 as well. How it will be 360? If I take point X here, for a for example, a blue one, I took point X, so it's starting a crest. And then I took Y here for a red, I took, so it is also starting a crest. Now, what is the interval between them? It is 160. So I can say the phase difference is either zero, or I can also say the phase difference is 360 or two pi radian. Okay. So remember when the waves are given the displacement distance graph or the displacement time graph, the displacement distance graph, the horizontal distance is the wavelength and displacement time graph, the horizontal uh, interval is the time period or a period. And the amplitude is there, the wavelength, uh, the maximum displacement from mean position is representing the amplitude for both of these waves. Like this is the same concept we just discussed about the phase difference of the points. As you can see, point A and point C are anti-phase, B and D are uh, anti-phase, A and E are in-phase. This was about, so you can mention the particles in a wave as in-phase and anti-phase. Same thing, there's a comparison between the two waves, in-phase and anti-phase of the two waves in terms of either a wavelength or in terms of a time period. So let's say I want to work out the phase difference here between these two waves and we have the distance, so means it's a wavelength. So one wavelength will be equal to 360 degrees. So I need the same mode of vibration. So if, if I took point X here, then I will take point Y here. Or if I took point X here, then I will take point Y here. If I took point X here, then I will take point Y here. And this. The interval between X and Y, if I call that as X, so X will be equals to the phase, like it is represented by a phi, so we can just cross multiply and get the answer. Same way, if it is in terms of the time period, we work out the same manner. But how you know which, which wave is leading and which wave is lagging? As you can see, if it is a displacement and distance graph, okay? So the wave, always remember the wave which starts from the origin is always a leading. 
because whenever we compare the wavelengths we the rule is that we compare in terms of the origin so as you can see here for a green one it is start from origin complete its vibration and return to origin so which wave complete the vibration and return to origin after completing one wavelength so green completed one wavelength as compared to they have the same wavelength but the thing is that which one return to the origin first if it start from mean position so this is a mean position for the blue it is started here and this completed here so it means which wave return to the mean position first that wave is leading in a wavelength remember so which wavelength is which wave is leading here so wave a is leading and wave b is lagging means when two waves are there one is ahead one is behind so the leading one is the one which or how to identify which is leading so we start from the origin and check which one complete one wavelength first so this completed one wavelength here point a this is a mean position so we start from the mean position observe the vibration so this is a position where it completed the wavelength so which one completed the wavelength first for starting from the mean position and returning to the mean position it is a so means a is leading and b is lagging but if it is a time axis because it's a time axis means like we start to observe these waves when we start to observe these wave b is already here so it means because we this is a moment we are starting them so it means b has already started from the mean position and a is just starting now when we start to observe it means b is ahead of a so because like example when you start the timer you are observing b and you are observing a b is already at its extreme position or near to extreme position so it you will consider like b has already started its phase so it means b is leading and a is lagging because when you start to observe a a is starting from here but b has already started from some point but when we start to observe we found that it is at its extreme position so it means in this case b is leading and a is lagging but in the in the wavelength and displacement graph the one which returned start from mean position and return to mean position after completing